Hi, everyone. Hope you're doing well. I wanted to bring you an update on the Okmulgee and killing and dismemberment of the four men that had been missing. Um, this is about the person of interest and uh, him being in court. So we've got some updates, right? It's pretty, it's pretty interesting. Um, I'm going to play the court for you really quick here, read the article. And then um, I have a couple other things that I want to show you. But um, the person that he shot 10 years ago is actually speaking out um, on one of these clips that I'm going to show you. And uh, it's just rather interesting. But here we go. Do you solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I'll be done? All right, you are Joseph Lloyd Kennedy. You are Joseph Lloyd Kennedy. Kennedy? You look for your name. Is it Mr. Joseph yeah. Kennedy? Yeah, I don't okay. hear too good. Sorry? I don't hear too good. All right, well, we got a public banner next to you, and if you can't understand something, uh, you can ask me. I'll be out. Uh, there's two cases you're here in front of me today. It's your first appearance. Everything is being recorded. There's a prosecutor in the room. Uh, it's not in your best interest to talk about the case. Just so you understand, I got to uh, make some findings here, whether there's appropriate reasons to have you held and in what conditions to have you held. The first case we'll address is a local charge for grand theft motor vehicle. And this is uh, uh, based on the police report. I'll find this factual basis. Uh, this involved a stolen Toyota Tundra. And based on what's in the police report, I'll find this factual basis. I'm going to leave the bond set on that at $2,500. I'll appoint a public defender to represent you. Uh, but there's a warrant out of the state of Oklahoma uh, being held as a fugitive from justice. The bond on that is $500,000. But based on the, the circumstances which have come to my attention, I'm going to have you held in a bond at this point in time. The public defender's office or attorney can file for a bond motion if you wish. So uh, you'll have to make a decision at some time about uh, waiving or fighting extradition. Uh, but that's the decision today. You understand? Uh, I believe so. All right. So yeah. for, the re for the record, please, uh, we would like the court to reconsider and uh, go with the bond that has set out the warrant of $500,000 as the authorities there in Oklahoma had deemed appropriate. Uh, I understand it, and I see the uh, warrant which calls for that amount. Uh, given the total picture which has come to my attention, I think at this point in time, uh, for public safety and for Mr. Kennedy's situation. I think no bond is appropriate. Been here so for no bond. Best. Right. <clears throat> Let me refresh that. I don't, well, let's see. Okay. So Joseph Lloyd Kennedy II is on suicide watch in a Florida jail after telling police that he was intending to jump off of a hotel balcony in Daytona Beach. A charging affidavit shows Kennedy is a person of interest in Oklahoma after four were shot and dismembered bodies um, were found in a river near Oak Mulgee. His wife also filed for divorce on Wednesday. As first reported by the Daytona Beach News Journal, Kennedy made the statement about jumping off of a hotel balcony to Daytona Beach Shores police on Tuesday after he was arrested after being stopped driving a stolen truck. Kennedy said the truck belonged to a friend, according to the affidavit. Oklahoma authorities want to question Kennedy about his possible involvement in the slaying of Mark Chastain, Brian Chastain, Mike Sparks, and Alex Stevens. Those men were reported missing October 9th by family members with a witness telling investigators they had left an Okmulgee residence on bicycles with plans to undertake a, quote, criminal act on October 14th. Their bodies were discovered in the Deep Fork River southwest of Okmulgee. Okmulgee Police Chief Joe Prentice said Monday investigators had searched a scrapyard where, quote, nothing remarkable was observed, but had found evidence of a violent event on an adjoining property. I've worked over 80 murders in my career, Prentice said. I have worked murders involving multiple victims. I have worked dismemberments, but this case involves the highest number of victims, and it's a very violent event. Meanwhile, Prentice also said Monday that Kennedy, who owns a salvage yard in the immediate area and already had been questioned on October 14th, had reported missing and was <clears throat> considered to be suicidal. Comments Kennedy made to officers who arrested him in Florida the next morning appeared to validate Prentice's assertion. 
According to police records, in connection with the felony grand theft charge Kennedy faced in Florida, he agreed to waive his right to remain silent. Kennedy told police he was friends with the trucker's owner, with the truck's owner, and had taken the vehicle without that owner's knowledge to spend the weekend in Florida. While Kennedy told the officers he was not a missing person and was not in any danger, other comments he made prompted them to believe he was suicidal. Quote, he did not go home like planned and admitted he was suicidal with plans to jump off of a hotel balcony, according to the report. On Friday, Kennedy was being held without bond at the Volusia County Branch Jail in Daytona Beach on a fugitive from justice charge, as well as a grand theft of a motor vehicle charge. His next court appearance in Florida is scheduled for December 20th. Prentice Okmulkey's police chief didn't have any update to the case Friday. Okmulgee County District Attorney Cole Iski couldn't be reached. A record check showed no additional filings related to Kennedy's 2012 case, where prosecutors are seeking to accelerate his punishment on assault and battery and obstruction, obstructing justice charges he pleaded guilty to in 2013. No criminal filings involving Kennedy related to this month's discovery of the slain men have been made either. However, a divorce petition was filed by Kennedy's wife, Sandra Jean Kennedy, on Wednesday. The two were married in 1980. In her petition, Sandra Jean Kennedy alleges, quote, a state of complete and irreconcilable incompatibility has arisen between the parties, rendering continuation impossible. An attorney representing Sandra Jean Kennedy declined this week to provide an additional comment, nothing, uh, noting negative public attention related to the Okmulgee slings and authorities' interest in her husband is wearing on his client and other members of her family. So, yeah, right? Okay, so information that came out, be suicidal, his wife is trying to file for divorce, like, whoa. Um, okay, and then, then this is the man that he had been shot at 10 years ago. And those moments, were you afraid you were going to die? Uh, yeah, I mean, I had my doubts, yeah. A shooting victim is coming forward now that this man who shot him 10 years ago is back in the public eye. I'm Shay Rossi. And I'm Sarah Whaley. Glad you're with us here at 10. We told you about Joe Kennedy, who you just saw when police named him as a person of interest in the killings of these four men in Okmulgee last week. Kennedy has not been charged in those murders as of yet. In an exclusive interview, Fox 23's Abigail Dye spoke with a victim in that old shooting case. Shay, Sarah Kennedy shot this victim a decade ago. And the victim, of course, tells me with that kind of run in with Kennedy, he's just not surprised to hear his name on the news again. Robert Skinner shows me where he was shot 10 years ago. And then where did it, the bullet come out? Right here. It stayed enlarged for three months and then they took it out. He says back in 2012, he pulled into this salvage yard in South Oak Mulgee to turn his car around when Joe Kennedy, the salvage yard owner, pulled up behind him. He pulled the gun out and I stepped behind my ex-wife and he shot me and I said, freak, I'm shot, run. Skinner called 911 and help was soon there. And so you were life flighted? Yes, to St. Francis. Joe Kennedy was charged with assault and battery with a dangerous weapon and obstructing an officer for the shooting. An affidavit in the case says Kennedy lied to police about vital details of the shooting. Skinner was also charged with second degree burglary. They found me guilty of uh, burglary and they stuck me on probation, even though OSBI proved that I was not even on his property when I got shot. They still put me on probation. Kennedy was serving a deferred sentence, which is similar to probation, for the shooting when he went missing last week after being named a person of interest in a quadruple murder case. Police say they found Kennedy in Florida driving a stolen car. This is video from his court date earlier this week when he was charged with grand theft auto. So it didn't surprise me a bit. Kennedy will be transported back to Tulsa after his court proceedings in Florida to be questioned by police in the Okmulgee murder case. Skinner said no matter the outcome, it's a horrible situation. I feel sorry for the families and I, I can just imagine what they're going through, you know, especially the one that has the baby that I seen on the news. I mean, you can't, I mean, you can't replace a child's father. I'm 
Kennedy does have an arraignment in Florida set for December 20th. This is an extremely interesting and developing case, but we are all over it. Be sure to stay with Fox 23 as we continue to bring you these new exclusive details. Live covering news that matters. I'm Abigail Dye, Fox 23. Right. So um, I'm going to show you here in a minute uh, the woman the family that has um, the baby that he's talking about, but um, uh, just to how they ended up catching him. So Tulsa, Oklahoma, the person of interest in the Okmulgee quadruple homicide was arrested Daytona Beach Shores this week with the help of a crime fighting tool, according to an arrest affidavit. The document filed, uh, filled out by the arresting officer says that the black truck, a 67 year old Joe Kennedy was driving on October 18th was flagged by the officer's license plate reader as stolen. According to the document, Kennedy told police that he had borrowed the truck from a friend, but did not tell that friend. Earlier this summer, Tulsa police became one of several Greene County agencies that began installing the flock safety system. It uses license plate reading material. Quote, I can't tell you enough how this technology has basically been like we have operated in the dark, said Tulsa Police Chief Wendell Franklin during an August press conference. And flipping this technology on has been like flipping the light switch on. The system is installed in high crime areas around the city, according to the police. And TBD told News Channel 8 on Friday, the system has helped with over 60 documented cases, mostly stolen vehicle cases. It should be noted that stolen vehicles are utilized by criminals in a number of violent crimes, including shootings, homicides, and robberies, Franklin said in August. Yeah. So that's interesting that that's what even flag can begin with, because at first they had no idea you know, who he, who they were dealing with, but that, that ended up stopping him to begin with. So, um, this is the video from the family member. It's really, really sad. Jessica Chastain is still accepting that her husband, Mark, isn't coming home. I don't know. It just feels like he's still in my garage, <laughs> if that makes sense. Or he's still out here. Or something. He's just, he's here. It doesn't feel like he's gone. While trying to explain that to her toddler, Gracie. No, no, no Dada. And four-year-old, Tucker. We told him that Daddy had to go help Papa Billy fix the car. <laughs> Jesus needed him, and he called him to go fix the car. He asked, well, can we go there? And I'm like, no, there's not a road. And that road that got them here is one this family and three others never expected to go down here in quiet Oak Mulgee. Mark Chastain was one of four men who vanished September 9th. That Friday, police found human remains in the Deep Fork River. And Monday, Police Chief Joe Prentice confirmed Jessica's worst fear. The human remains recovered from the Deep Fork River at the Sharp Road Bridge have been positively identified as Mark Chastain, Billy Chastain, Mike Sparks, and Alex Stevens. All four bodies were dismembered before being placed in the river. Each victim suffered gunshot wounds. I mean, they took they took my kid's daddy and my husband, not only Mark, but they took other people's family. Police say Joe Kennedy is a person of interest in the case who went missing just after the remains were found. Tuesday, police arrested him in Florida for driving a stolen vehicle. Eventually, the truth will come out. Eventually. Now, instead of searching for Mark, Jessica misses him and searches for justice. We need justice for not only Mark, but for all of them. Isn't that sad? Oh, my Lanta. Oh, when they, the baby asked for daddy and she said no and the baby cried. Oh, I almost lost it. But um, this is the update so far. I'll keep you guys posted on anything new that comes out about the case. Um, I hope that you all have a great day. I'll talk to you very, very soon. Take care, everyone.